Okay guys, so this is my living room. Yeah. And this here is a bunch of succulents that I purchased in preparation for a project that I wanted to do. I wanted to do my first succulent arrangement. I've never done it before and I'm, I bought a lot. I wanna be able to pack in a bunch in this particular pot, which I'll show you in a minute because I want it to look really full with like no gaps where I can see soil and stuff like that. So I'm scared to like rough up the root balls and stuff, but I'm gonna give it a try and just see if it works. Succulents are pretty tough, so let's see. Okay, so we're hanging out by my front door. This is my front porch, it's covered. Um, so I thought it would be good to do it here and here's my setup. All right, so here is my bounty. What are you? Senecio, 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 Orange Flame. You got this one. Portulacaria Afra. I'm sure there's like a non botanical name that's probably a lot easier to pronounce. There's another one. Oh, isn't this one so pretty though? Look at this one. It's purple and it has babies, you see? All in there, little baby plants. This one is pretty, it's very unique. Mini blue chalk sticks. Look at that. Now this one is a monster, guys. It's kind of flat, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna work this into an arrangement because it has no like neck. And look at all the babies. I'm going to have to try to root some of these somewhere else because I don't, or maybe fit them into the arrangement in different places because this thing, just for context, like, this is big. Commander Hay Hens and Chicks. This one I have out in the landscape. Um, it is hardy in my zone 7B, 7A, 6B, it's Angelina, um, which I do have a video on my channel about this particular one. It's a good substitute for like... Um, the Proven Winners Lemon Coral Sedum. Let me see if I can, you see that here? It's shaded now, but you see that little drift? That's this. So I use a coffee filter to cover this little drainage hole here um, so that if the soil wants to be going in that way, that it at least will minimize the amount of soil that's pointing, that pours into the saucer underneath. So I have had great luck with the Espoma brand cactus mix. It drains quickly, it has nutrients in it already, and it's made for specifically cacti and succulents. Uh, so this first one is the Angelina Sedum, and I roughed up the root ball as you can see so that I can lay it on its side and it wouldn't take up so much space in there. I laid it on its side so that it can drape over the edge and provide some contrast against the blue planter that I have. I picked the hens and chicks next because it had a nice bold foliage that would contrast against the sedum. <laughs> Hi Noah. Hi. <laughs> Stop banging on the window. Stop it. <laughs> this one didn't have like a long neck that I could stick in the soil so I had to be very creative with how I did it. I also had to make sure that I put soil around the different areas because if you're leaning it like sort of on its side, you have to make sure that each part of the root ball has soil around the entire thing um, so that it could just survive at least for a season. I don't imagine that this arrangement is going to last me forever, but at least through the summer and some of the fall. As I was doing this, I also had to make sure that with the next plant that I put in, that it wasn't like yellow on yellow and green on green and purple on purple. I wanted to make sure that there was some level of contrast either with the foliage texture or the color so that when you looked at it even from afar, you could tell that it was a sort of thought out arrangement um, as opposed to just something that was slapped together. And one thing that you'll see me doing too is making sure, again, that I put soil around each of the root balls. Even though I'm tearing the root balls up to put them in here, I still want to make sure that there's coverage and that the roots are not exposed to like the bare air. 
Um, I did have to come in with like cuttings and things like that throughout this process to cover some of the areas where I couldn't really put another big plant, but you could see too much soil in my opinion, so I stuck a cutting in there. In this next clip, what you'll see me do is looking for a blue, and I'm comparing these two, and the other one was just too strappy. It looked, in texture-wise, too similar to the green plant on the right that's already there, so I picked the blue one, one that had a little bit more of the bold texture to it so that it would contrast. I had difficulty with this next one because in the first position that I put it in, the three stems that you see there, they sort of splayed out against and like splayed out, like split from each other, if that makes sense. So I had to bunch them in a way that they looked all bunched together so that it would look a little fuller. Next, I dug a big well in the middle because I knew that this was where one of the quote centerpieces was going to be. So I was trying out the positioning for this jade plant. Um, against the other blue plant as well and trying to compare where I might put the other big one if I put the jade plant there. So you don't have to always like take everything out of the plant can first and put it there first. You can sort of mess with it when it's plant can first and then go ahead and actually take it out and rough up the root balls. Another thing that I notice is that as you get closer to finishing the arrangement, it becomes harder to figure out how to place the soil um, to make sure that all the root balls are covered without making a mess on the plants that have already been placed. Um, so you do end up kind of making a mess, but that's okay. Um, what you end up doing is just like, I, I blew onto them and the dust comes right off. The cactus mix is pretty light and fluffy, so it's easy to get this arrangement clean in the end because I kept it clean throughout the process, but then I also just like used my breath to blow on it and it worked just fine. When you're preparing to make an arrangement like this, don't just go for the big plants or even just the medium plants. You have to go ahead and buy some smaller ones too because if you want it to have that look where every bit of soil is covered and you can't see soil, you're going to need those little teeny plants to fill in the gaps in areas where the bigger plants just would not fit. I was thinking about adding this bluish purple one there, but it was right next to the other blue one that I just put there, so I ended up going for one that has a little bit of reddish orange in it. Um, those got a little bit leggy. They looked better when I got them. Um, they got leggy where I was keeping them indoors in preparation for the project, so um, I can always like replace them or um, take cuttings from them and you know start fresh and keep them in a place that gets more sun from now on. But for this purpose, it brought a little pop of color underneath there where some of the bigger plants just like would not fit. So with how tightly packed you're going to see me pack these plants together, I'm sure you're wondering how I'm going to water this. So I use... Uh, for all my succulents in my house, a medical squirt bottle. I'll put a picture on the screen and hopefully that'll help. So this already came as an arrangement when I bought it. And I don't think that the plants were happy. The root balls were not very strong. And the whole thing just sort of fell apart on me as I was taking it apart. These little ones here had like one little tap root. Um, and so I couldn't really put many of those smaller ones to use, unfortunately. But I did split some of this plant apart and I decided to use them um, in spaces underneath this big blue one where I could still see a bunch of soil. So it worked out anyway. In this particular area, I already had like blue and green and so I was looking for something a little bit uh, more of a pop of color. So this peachy color one was perfect for this particular area. And now I finally <laughs> am able to use this one that I've been wanting to put somewhere. And I thought that this would be a good place here in the back. Um, it has beautiful um, colors to it and I love the texture. I just couldn't fit it into the arrangement or make it look right until just this moment and this was the right spot for it. On this side, on the left, what I did now is I'm just picking off cuttings that sort of fell off of other plants and um, trying to put them in the soil because there were some areas where I could still see some soil and I really wanted this arrangement to look lush and full and not have a bunch of gaps in it. I know, again, that it won't last forever, but um, I just wanted something that would look pretty for the season and I can always pull this apart and separate them out for the winter once the weather starts to break. I could see soil in the part underneath this blue plant on the right here so I went and grabbed like a small um, little plant that I knew I could just nestle in there 
um, underneath that plant so that you wouldn't be able to see any soil again it became kind of trickier as the arrangement became fuller and fuller to be able to fit my hands in there and make sure but you can work the soil pretty um, easily because it's nice and fluffy so one thing that I do regret is although this next plant is very beautiful this would have been a perfect spot to put big bold like purple texture or big bold yellow texture I feel like I had a lot of strappy stuff um, and it ended up looking a little bit more wooly I guess is the proper word I don't know um, I liked the front because there was a big distinction between the plants and it you could see like a difference in color and texture towards the front what I call the front of the arrangement this area here is a little bit more wild thing <laughs> Uh, and I would have liked to, looking back on this project, have had the entire thing all the way around look incredible. And I think it probably would have been better if I had had some big bold texture like I did in the front for the back as well, like in a purple. This next succulent was really pretty, but it had too big of a root ball to fit in the space where I needed it. So I literally just chopped it off and I'm hoping that it roots some of these may not make it guys so this is sort of an experiment for me and part of that is just knowing that some of it may go well and some of it may not right um that's just the way gardening is and plant ownership is some stuff works out and some doesn't so you'll see me put cuttings in here um to fill in spaces where you could see soil some of those may make it and some of those may not but i can always pull them out as needed and replace certain plants as needed All right, so now that I have done a little bit of cleanup, I'm gonna show you what the final product is. All right, here we go. Oh, don't mind that tomato. I know you guys have random tomatoes on your patio, right? All right, so here. There you go. I hope you guys like it. I'll probably display it like this because it'll have the bright chartreuse that hangs over. It'll have this greenish red, and then this purple really stands out against the blue. So I'll probably display it something like this. I'm not sure where, but this is probably gonna be the backside. I mean, it's pretty, but I probably should have gotten more purple. Let me know if you like it.